And take it from them we shall. Ruinous Insight here, welcoming you to part one of a brand new modded Total War Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires campaign. SFO Grimhammer 3 Warriors of Chaos. The community vote is in, and Archaon lives up to his name as the ever-chosen. He's a good pick because he can confederate all the other Chaos Warriors, and he's an interesting character because of his relationship relationship to chaos. The fact that Archaon hates the gods yet is cursed to be their greatest champion is very on brand for Warhammer. But I'll save the lore rants for the campaign itself. Before we get started though, if you enjoy this content and you want to see it updated regularly, don't forget to drop your likes and comments for the algorithm down below, as scheduling, episode, and campaign length are tied to engagement. Huge shout out to Venris and the SFO team for their work, and as always, the biggest shoutouts to you guys for your comments and support. YouTube's my hobby, not my day job, and your comments keep it fun and keep the channel alive. Anyway, we're going to take a quick look at the faction and difficulty setup, but do feel free to skip to gameplay if not interested via the chapters below. Now, the Warhost of the Apocalypse is a very vassal-centric faction with a built-in snowball mechanic. Archeon gets increased souls currency, a research rate, and diplomatic relations with all those Chaos factions for every vassalized faction. Effectively, the more you vassalize, the more you snowball, and the more of these factions wish to become your vassals. Further, being champion of Undivided, Archeon gets an additional gift of chaos to buff his armies, cooldown reduction for chosen for his heroes, and the ability to build all of the chaos shrine types in his fortresses. Most of the other factions only be able, are able to build their specific type or their undivided type. Uh, lastly, he gets a increase to weapon and missile strength per rank achieved for his army and ward save for his army, as well as a little bit of authority, which I'll discuss what it does when we get into to the gameplay, and his iconic Swords of Chaos serve him for free. And that's about it for Archeon, who also starts with a eclectic smattering of various types of Chaos units and some Gods units, which we'll try out shortly. But let's take a look at the settings for the campaign. Very hard, very hard is the difficulty we are going to uh, go with, and we'll keep the AI stats modifier dialed up to the max. Frankly, I don't particularly care about the uh, end game scenario as I've grown to find them more tedious than anything. I like the uh uh, let's say a diversity of uh, fighting uh, lots and lots of factions at once rather than fighting lots of armies from a single faction. We're going to keep it to the biggest wa though because other than the Will of Hashut, uh, they are the closest to Archaon's positions. A lot of the other factions are a lot further away than the Orcs and I don't want to do the Will of Hashut because we want to ally with the Chaos Dwarfs and mix and match lots of chaotic type units. Anyway, not a big deal there. There, but that's about it for me. Let's take the power from the gods. All glory to the algorithm. Let's get to it. It is time we march south. Let the quivering fools know we come to tear down their nation, slay their kings, and ravage their mortal remains. Alright, thanks for adding that last part there, Archeon. Thanks for that. And if I sound amused, it was because while the camera was panning down, it was sort of focused on this uh, exalted Keeper of Secrets here, Helmrip, and I thought, oh wait, what happened to Archeon? He looks a little bit more slaneshy than I remember him being. But anyway, uh, Archeon was just blending into his surroundings. Uh, Warhost of the Apocalypse, briefly how they play, we have access to the souls currency which we get by killing things and destroying things and we can use that for various upgrades whether it be additional chaos gifted units uh, upgrades whether they be faction wide or army wide etc etc we'll go over them when we actually uh, get access to them we have the dark fortress idea or concept or a mechanic that's the word I was looking for wherein we occupy particular settlements and thereby confederate nope 
vassalize all the surrounding Norskan tribes. Uh, Warband is another mechanic that the warriors of Chaos use and or have access to, which is pretty great. And we can recruit units on the go and upgrade them to different units on the go, rather than retrofitting armies via recruitment. Uh, then we have the Dark Authority concept, which provides various buffs, including upkeep reduction for units devoted to that particular god or to Undivided, uh, which uh, gives us certainly an incentive to get an army going for each of the Dark Gods. And then we have the Paths to Glory and at the same time the Marks of Chaos, which are boons uh, that we have access to uh, by completing various challenges or by giving a devotion to a particular god. Obviously this is all locked for now, so we'll go more over them as we go. Uh, what do we have here? Brass Collar of Corn on our Exalted Hero. Uh, free Cornate Authority. And Path to Glory minus 25% souls cost to devote to corn. Huh. Well, that might be useful if we choose to devote to corn, which you know, reasonably likely, I would say. And I guess we'll keep that. Also, I think once you do the devotion, the trait gets deleted and replaced with a new trait anyway. So it doesn't really matter what trait one starts with. Anyway, Prince Ogrex, and wait one second. The Great. So you're a special hero that has the Tormentor Sword ability and a few other buffs. Nice, nice, nice. All right, we're going to pop you into Archaon's army. He starts with a couple of Chaos Warriors, and hey, some Chaos Warriors of Corn. That worked out. And ah, he has a unit from every one of the gods. Swell for him. Let's get a few Marauders and Doggies in here. Uh, let's hit Helm Rep real quick as our starting battle. Uh, we have a stance summoning, which gives us the ability to use the Fires of Chaos Fiery Bombardment ability. Yeah, why not? Hopefully that doesn't reduce our movement to the point that we can't hit the Writhing Fortress. Guess we're about to find out. Away we go. Obviously, first battle, we can't really lose, and we're not gonna, but we'll make it cinematic because it's Archaon's first time on field. Go. Alrighty, the gods will indeed, isn't it nice to have a lord that actually gives a pre-battle speech? Not much of one as the older lords seem to, generally speaking, be pretty quiet compared to uh, the newer lords, like the huge speeches that Yuan Bo always gives, but nonetheless. Anyway, here we go. The first battle should be a reasonably easy time. We're going to send the Hell Striders and the Chaos Warhounds around the enemy together with the Chaos Knights of Zinch and hopefully catch out at least one of the units of Demonettes. They're obviously going to be the biggest threat on the field other than the Exalted Keeper of Secrets. And we're going to do a little bit of a dance around the Demonettes like so in the hope that they engage the Chaos Knights who are not fragile, unlike everything else is. And down here, it looks like it'll be a match between a couple of units of devoted marauders of Slanesh and a couple of marauders of our... This is actually a marauder. Uh, yep, to a couple of marauders of our own. But at the same time, it'll be the chaos spawn of a Nurgle, which I believe are the toad form ones, yeah. Alright, there we go. The Chaos Spawn are in, and they'll do the damage as well as annoying the enemy uh, with uh, the uh, Poison debuff. And back here, it looks like our Chaos Knights of Zinch are charging in to those Demonettes and getting plenty of air and running them down. Uh, let's see, do the Chaos Knights of Zinch have magical damage? Indeed they do, which will be particularly helpful against these demon units with their massive amount of physical resistance. More Demonettes are joining the fray, however, at the same time, our Hellstriders of Slanesh are going to join the fray as well, applying that massive Overwhelm debuff to the enemy. And we'll follow that up with the Warhounds coming in to hit the enemy in the back as well. And there's that uh, Firestorm, or whatever the ability is called, uh, coming down from...
from Archaeon's stance, dishing out heavy damage to some of the Marauders of Slanish, which appear to be routing all already between the flames and the Chaos Spawn. Shouldn't be any problem at all. Over in the center of the battlefield, Archaeon is facing off against Mr. Helmrip here, the uh, exalted Keeper of Secrets, as well as a few of his guarding Marauders, but the Marauders shouldn't be any issue whatsoever. It's so weird to see, uh, uh, weird to see Archaeon without Dorgar, though. And he's obviously a lot slower on foot, which is at least somewhat problematic for him. Uh, looks like the enemy lord is nearly done for. We also have our Chaos Warriors with Halberds here. Once you're applying a little bit of that anti-large, it looks like Ograk's got a little bit of damage on him, but it looks like also he won't be getting too much more as the Exalted Keeper of Secrets is melting away and will fall together with the rest of his army. Lovely. And the Chaos Knights of Zinch took care of both of these units of uh, demonettes without too much trouble and with a little bit of backup from the other fast movers. A very nice easy little first battle but we'll find uh, gradually harder battles and I'm sure the Slaneshi can appreciate that. All right, there we go. Easy little first fight, though. We did take a little bit of damage, as particular to Prince Ograx and to the Health Striders of Slanesh there, but hardly surprising due to the general fragility uh, for the Slaneshi units. Kind of case in point with regards to the enemy army. But anyway, uh, we'll sacrifice the captives because we don't know how much money we'll need. And then if we go back into regular stance, we can in fact reach the Writhing Fortress. Fantastic. And uh, no level up as yet, so I guess we just go again for another battle. Though, what do we have in terms of defenders here? Uh, honestly, that almost seems not particularly worth fighting. Although, I do have to wonder how much damage we'd take if we... Uh, and if we don't attack it, let me see this. Is there another nearby Chaos Fortress wherein we'd be likely to actually get some fighting on the walls? And the answer to that is I don't know. There might be. Oh, just for fun. No, let's just attack it. Why not? The gate might be a little bit... Oh, right, it is SFO. Let's see how the, uh, let's see how the gates and the... Uh, and the towers function in the Chaos Campaign, or specifically Warriors of Chaos Campaign. Go again. Alrighty, here we go, our first assault of a Chaos Fortress, and it'll be a Slaneshi Fortress, and the Slaneshi Towers are the scariest of the towers, so we should definitely be careful here. We're bound to take a lot of damage, at least to our Marauders, while they make their way towards the settlement. On the bright side, though, the Chaos Knights of Zinch and their barrier will keep them reasonably safe as they head towards that gatehouse, together with the Hellstriders and the Chaos Warhounds, and of course everybody else that's a relatively large unit. Uh, trying to keep our the rest of our infantry over to the side here, um, but it doesn't really matter where we are because the Chaos Towers, or the Towers, does it actually say Chaos or just Magic Tower? Magic Tower. Uh, the Magic Towers will be able to hit us wherever we go because they have those increased areas uh, in SFO. And generally speaking, sieges are a lot more difficult in SFO, so uh, regardless of the fact that the enemy does not have too much in the way of defenders, it doesn't mean that this battle will necessarily be all that easy. Anyway, Marauders and a unit of Warriors of Chaos are going to head up the wall over on uh, this side. We are very nearly through the gate down now, which is down to close to a third of its HP. While the rest of our units are, well, at least some of them, are going to try to move through the gate, while the others, the only way to keep them safe is, ironically enough, to send them up the wall, so more marauders are going up there. At least the towers won't be able to hit them, and uh, they will meet their ends at the enemy's blades, or spear arms, or whatever Slaneshi uh, units are facing 
bouncing off against them, rather than getting hit from afar with range attacks. Anyway, that gate, let's see what we're looking at here. 5k damage left on it very very nearly there i'm just gonna speed this up for a few seconds and there we go that should be it right ah perfect gate goes down and we are ready to move in the chaos knights of zinch and those units of chaos spawn of nurgle are going to follow and then we are going to drop a searing doom right on the biggest concentration of enemies gotta love that searing doom such a great spammable spell and certainly going to be extremely effective in arcane army as he will have plenty of chosen and chaos warriors to hold the line and thus force enemy infantry to blob up also you gotta love the chaos knights in general being a more defensive sort of version of cavalry and able to fight like this generally not something you want to do with a cavalry unit especially against uh, uh, especially against anti-large and stuff but the chaos knights are not fragile and by any means in fact the zinchin knights haven't even lost their barrier yet now up here it looks like our chaos warriors and their marauder minions have made their way up on top of the wall and are facing off against the Marauders of Slanesh and, and the Demonettes. But I think they should be they should be fine, in theory anyway. Uh, we do have a decent pile of enemies blobbing up up here as well, which will mean probably at least a few more uses of that Searing Doom. Out here, however, uh, the pathing is being a little bit annoying. These units, the Chaos Warriors of Corn with Halberds and the regular Chaos Warriors, refuse to try to make their way through the gate. Every time I tell them to try, uh, they just try to go up the walls. In retrospect, I probably should have just sent them up the walls for from the beginning rather than taking additional shots from the towers but oh well live and learn it's one of the first battles and i hardly expect i will take enough damage for it to matter all that much anyway 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 we finally made our way through the gate the beachhead is established and the gate is clear and but these guys still refuse to try to go through it every time i try to order them in and they try to run out pathing has always been kind of broken in general in uh, settlements but especially around gates and breaches and walls like guys would you <laughs> it's open and there's nobody guarding it uh well they'll get there eventually or they'll die at least the uh, cavalry have no choice but to go through the gate and thus they aren't really uh, uh, concerned about trying to run around it stomp those chaos warriors of slanish or marauders of slanish i should say and finally the cornate halberds make their way in and the rest too. Oh, lovely. Alright, how are we doing up here? We are still fighting a blob of devoted marauders and there is a couple more units below them as well. Having a little bit more trouble over on this side, however, we should be able to send Ograx to back this little blob of marauders up and hopefully prevent them from routing. He does have that Tormentor sword ability as well, so he should be able to reduce the attacks of the enemies to the point that our marauders should be able to win. Alright. Very nice, very nice. Not too interested in seeing too much like-on-like -like fighting in terms of the uh, Marauders on Marauders, but at least with the advent of the various Chaos factions uh, that didn't exist um, back when the Warriors of Chaos existed, uh, as in, in the very first game, it's a pretty big difference, pretty, a pretty big change, a lot more interesting in terms of uh, fighting armies and nice, nice, take that guy's head, and uh, pretty big difference as I was saying in the form of the asymmetric gameplay, which is uh, just great. Anyway, Zinch and Korn are working together, but the Knights of Zinch are at least the Knights that the Kornates shouldn't be uh, uh, shouldn't be too annoyed about since these guys aren't cast and uh, they're just killing. And a little bit of help from one of the, or the spawn of Nurgle as well. This blob, almost all the gods working together. Can't we all just get along? Looks like we're doing pretty okay on the walls as well. Ugh, the camera work on the walls is wonky though. Sorry about that. 
but not too much I can do about it. And now that we've sent the Cornate Halberds up here, I imagine that the, the Chaos Warriors should defeat the Marauders and just fine. Gonna make sure that happens, however, with dropping our third, I believe, Searing Doom of the battle, and it looks like that Searing Doom rips that unit apart and forces it to rout. And one devoted Marauders of Solanus unit left the enemy Lord unit down here, which is, I believe, this Demonette unit, continues to fight, um, but by the looks of it, we won't be fighting for too much longer. All the while, we have been taking hits from this particular tower. It's certainly a possible reason to acquire a, a few harpies in the army just to be able to bring towers down in siege battles. I mean, obviously, Doom Knights would be preferable, but it'll be a long, long time till we can get a couple of Doom Knights uh, and, you know, a Chaos Dragon to round out the air support for this army. Anyway, with that, the last of the Marauders will shatter and the Demonettes will begin to become banished as the battle turns completely to our favor. And we just gotta make sure the last of the Demonettes die so that the fortress falls or the uh, tower falls and a victory is ours. Very nice. Yeah, very nice indeed. Uh, certainly fighting a lot of Slaneshi to start off, but hey, we'll be getting a Slaanesh army as soon as we can. Gotta get those god-themed armies, and uh, gotta get them leveling ASAP so that we can get the uh, Gifts of Chaos and uh, marks, of, marks of Chaos and turn them to the actual gods, as in the Lords. Alright, there we go. Certainly a slightly better battle than I was originally expecting, but at the same time, the biggest hurdle in the battle itself was not the enemy, but the mechanics of the pathing and apparent getting our Chaos Warriors through that open gate. They just really didn't want to walk, but oh well. Uh, our Hellstriders got pretty badly damaged, but frankly, they're not staying in this army, and I don't care all that much. Uh, we are going to occupy and vassalize, acquiring our first fortress and apparently immediately unlocking swords of chaos and which serve Archaon for free because they are his personal night band there we go uh, pop them into the army though I perhaps should have waited and upgraded a few things here first mm, a little bit of favor versus a little bit of growth well I guess we'll need both of these buildings as the base infrastructure. There's not going to be a much admin in this campaign since we primarily only have these dark fortresses and they're fairly easy to, bu to build, so... Hmm. I think we'll do those. Uh, corpse Mound to get a little bit more healing, though we don't care over much about them, I think. I'd also like to see whether we can do anything else. No, but it doesn't look like it. All right, now, that did two important things. Thing the first, it unlocked our first to Gift of Chaos, and as I recall, there should be a base one that buffs Marauders. Yes, Raiders, Raymond, Casualty or Punishment Rate plus 10% for Chaos Marauder units, and Attack for Marauders. Since our early army will be quite Marauder, heavy we may as well get that and this will also as I understand buff the marauders that are at uh, uh, that are in our defensive garrisons I'm wondering whether we should do the fury of chaos as well to get furies on the field ASAP but they're not going to provide us too much more value than chaos warhounds due to the fragility of both and frankly ruinous bulwark is my favorite bulwark so I and mean, we should try to get that shatterstone the next time we come upon a place uh, that has walls but anyway raiders raiment for now all right looks good to me archaeon you are good as well you have your first level up and that's got to be that root marcher even though i'm sure searing doom would be the uh, preferable thing to do elgrex mm, we could immediately get income from post battle loot now this will all reset once we give you a path of glory anyway Unless we keep you undivided, though I'm going to have to think about that. The Brass Collar of Corn makes it just very tempting to devote to Corn. I hope that the Great, his special trait, doesn't disappear if we uh, devote him. Does anybody know? As <laughs> That would be a shame if it was an oversight. Hmm... Uh. You know, let's get Blademaster first, just for a single 0.5 melee attack ain't too bad. And also, ah, 
Yeah, so Manticores do have fire attacks on them, that's good, because Archeon should be the closest to a fire army that we can get, because uh, he has Kindle Flame, he does fire attacks himself, and we should get him a fire sorcerer as well, which we can't unlock yes. yet, but we will at level 2. Alright, unless one gets randomly spawned by a, uh, by a mission or a random event. Scrutiny of the Dark Gods is their only option, so scrutiny of the Dark Gods it shall be. Plenty of unit experience for those marauders. And it upgrades Raider's Raiment, which we went for first. Anyway, alright, next up, diplomacy. What do we have here? Is anybody willing to immediately get vassalized? No cooler around, but they don't want to trade, alas, and oh right, the Warriors of Chaos can trade. That feels a little weird, but sure. Uh, we'll have to decide where we go, but probably after we destroy and or vassalize this little faction, Exquisite Pain, so and that's what we'll do. Isn't Boris Ursus nearby? Uh, he should be somewhere here, shouldn't he? So here's the thing about Archon. We want to go around and catch them all. Collect a village, collect Arca or collect Archon. <laughs> collect Colec, etc., etc., etc. But before we do, since that'll entail a lot of fighting other Chaos factions, even if they are of different flavors, uh, may want to maybe fight Boris? Mm. Could be useful to get his defeat trade as well. Tower of Torment. I wish I remembered where he was. Uh, oh, ha <laughs> It is at the Tower of Torment. Fantastic. We can see this uh, is here. All right. Yeah. We'll we'll take out Boris and then we'll move southward, possibly through this area and then loop around to Kolek, and then we'll send Kolek after Village while Archeon tries to uh, prey upon the Empire. Uh, Archeon, please go into March Stance. Will you be able to get to Monolith of Bubonicus in a single turn? Does not look like it, but we'll give it a try anyway. Uh, we will have to go for the. Raid trophies here, I guess, as there's nothing to build and nothing to recruit, presumably, as yet. Yeah, nothing available. And, oh, hello, we got a free Hell Cannon. Gifted to us, eh? Well, I appreciate that. Let's end the turn, let's grab that Hell Cannon next turn before we head to the Monolith. And see if we can't raise a few more Marauders on our way. Now, this is a good example of why I figured we should probably... Uh, keep the endgame scenario at about turn 100, because clearly this is taking a while of just moving around. And that's going to be true for this campaign in general, especially because there will be a lot of territory that isn't really our territory, so, you know. Anyway, uh, free Hell Cannon, please, and Hounds of Pestilence, or Hounds of Decay, not quite as good as Hounds of Pestilence, uh, are going to be ours. And Marauders... Hmm. Do we need more Marauders in here? Yeah, let's get them for now. Money and or favor is relatively cheap after all. We got one turn of raiding by the looks of it. We can't reach the Monolith, so uh, that March stance was a little bit wasted, but oh well, not a big deal. How much do we get for raiding this? 149. I'm almost tempted to say that healing... Uh, I probably shouldn't have moved that far. You know what? Go back to raiding. I was thinking maybe healing might be a little bit more valuable, but this will give us a little bit of XP and a tiny, tiny bit of cash, so why not? End turn, then we'll head to the monolith. And by the looks of it, let's see, wait, is this another territory belonging to this guy? Hmm. We'll have to figure out which of the demonic factions we'll want to keep, as in vassalize, and then which ones of the demonic factions we'll want to destroy. And they all won't get along with each other, even if we do force vassalize them, but at the same time, factions that only have one settlement tend to be a little bit too weak, and thus not give us too much value. And by the looks of it, this place is also occupied by these guys, so we can take Monolith of Bubonicus, and yeah, that'll kill off the Skull Strider. Hmm. What if... Oh, hello. We can get a Marauders of Slanish. Ah, sure. And another Hounds of Decay. These will always come in handy. Although that took all of our money. And will this still kill the Hell Striders? No, it will not. Beautiful. It'll damage them, but it won't kill them. Also, note the Hounds of Decay are not yet nearly as hurt as the regular Chaos War Hounds, which aren't going to be nearly as useful. We got ourselves a Scroll of Aminar as a reward, and we can gift the Monolith to the Cool. Uh. Hmm. I sure gifted to the cool. There we go. 
It's not like this particular location gives us any purpose. Path to glory unlocked. There's that fear of Aminar and the blood marshes Zowers, which means... Uh, wait, will we start a turn in this province? Mm, yes, we will. Meaning, we can get some value out of it. Meaning, we should increase the... Casualty or punishment rate via foster cults first. And, oh, actually, then... Stormwork Mount is a different province. Hmm. So maybe I'm wrong. We'll see. And if I am wrong, that means we'll want to switch to exploit vassals afterward. Local warband recruitment plus 25% replenishment chance for undivided marauders. The boring marauders. The flavorless, bland marauders. Anyway, uh, Archeon, you have leveled again, good sir. Ooh, souls gained from... Ugh, I'd love to go into this, but Archeon is very point-hungry. There's a lot of stuff in here. And we're going to need to uh, make sure that we get the good stuff. Maybe we won't go all the way through his casting tree, because otherwise he won't be able to get everything. Speaking of, he has, well, Swords of Chaos serve him for free. He has that ward save and that weapon strength buffs. Buffs for Warriors of Chaos, including Reduction and Upkeep, buff for Chosen, buff for Chaos Knights, and Exalted Heroes, and... An area hex. All right, so he'll want a pretty, uh, pretty chaos warrior chosen knight heavy army, which he'll have, plus some support creatures to so that we can make sure we get the most out of them and that we can. Anyway, and down to Stormwreck Mount. Oh, I should check whether we can force these guys to vassalize, like at all. I'm ninety nine point nine nine percent sure that you can, as in vassalize demonic factions. E yes, you can. They want to give us 5k. Uh huh. Okay, so actually, now the question is does destroying them here force vassalize them? Let's about to find out. Have another Marauder of Slanish, not another Warhound, however. Just gonna keep spending cash like this. Alright, if we can indeed vassalize them. I'm gonna kill off this Hellstrider again. Do we fight this? Hmm. Honestly, they're kind of weak, and I think we can find better battles within the next few minutes. It's just that... Oh, this poor Hellstrider. I have a feeling that the Hellstriders, like the Chaos Warhounds, are going to be an issue in auto-resolve, so I think I'm just going to let them die. Even though the Overwhelm buff that they provide is quite strong. Uh, base weapon and armor-piercing weapon damage, minus 40%. It is useful. But these guys are so weak. You know what? Let's fight them manually super quick. It'll only take, like, a minute at uh, max speed, especially now that we have the Swords of Chaos in combination, and with the Knights of Zinch, and a Hell Cannon as well. I feel like Undivided Authority shouldn't only provide upkeep reduction for Undivided, but should provide a reduction for all Chaos Gods, but at a much lower rate as well. As in, for example, 20% reduction for full devotion to corn, and then, I don't know, 5-10% mm, to 10 for undivided. And just so that you have an incentive to build undivided armies with lots of different uh, uh, factions. Anyway, uh, knights, you are going to be escorted by your doggos. This combination works really, really well with the uh, Razor Gores for those watching the Torox campaign. And I'm sure it'll work just fine with the Chaos Knights as well. You guys can sit back here. It's actually probably going to take longer to set this up than it is to uh, fight the battle. Start battle. Uh, who is a good target here? Devoted Marauders of Slanish, Devoted Marauders of... Just pick up Devoted Marauders of Slanish. Archeon and Ogrex, you're going to march forward. We're going to deselect you, pop you guys into Group 2 and charge you at the enemy. Group 3, Knights, Group 4, Knights. And get ready to move. Oh, uh, we should probably protect the Hell Cannon. In case the Furies want to go after it. I don't know that they will. But it is a distinct possibility. Alright, Knights and Doggos, are those Furies going after you? Well, good luck to them if they do. Swords of Chaos, go surround and kill the enemy lord. And... charge. Alright, Hell Cannon, no more firing. You're just going to be a liability now. Uh, Archeon, I'm going to pop your Fear of Am Aramar, Aminar, Aramar, on the enemy. Aminar is a different creature. 
And then we're going to pop your Searing Doom down upon the enemy. Let's watch that. And oh, the doggos come in just as the Searing Doom comes down, but it shouldn't be particularly threatening to them. Here come and the Swords of Chaos to follow in as well. That's what I get for flipping away for one second. <laughs> uh, it was bound to happen. Also, let's drop this right here just to clip that unit. Otherwise, battle should be ours in a second. All this to protect some Hellstriders. Alright, Swords of Chaos are looking good in there, though there are so few enemies here that it's kind of hard to see you and do your thing. Uh, move away the Marauders, because I think they're kind of a liability. Mostly because they do little enough damage that they probably don't do too much for us here. Alright, Doggos, move away so you don't get killed. Swords of Chaos, Archaeon, attack. Uh, pop that... And I believe we're done. The enemy should shatter in a second. I see that leadership dropping. A couple more hits and... And... Kind of impressive that he's fighting for so long. Come on, Ogrex, hit him. Alright, there we go. I don't need to chase, just need to find whether this will allow us to vassalize on this little enemy. Alright, that took a little over two minutes, but uh, nonetheless... At least we keep these guys alive. How long for? I don't know, but who knows? Maybe they will be needed against Boris Ursus. And I think by destroying Boris Ursus so longer, it'll probably enable the various demonic factions to grow a little stronger out here, which ain't too bad. Uh, yes, yeah, subjugate. Vassalize, so we can. Perfect. And that's what we'll do then. And then I guess we'll give them this territory, which will engender destroying the Skaven. Well, that's the Skaven's problem, or at least this particular Skaven faction problem. And I suppose we'll want to grab Karak Vlag from the, I believe this is the Gormadni tribe, yes. So we can get Boris and destroy him and then loop back around here briefly to take these two dark fortresses. Ally with the Chaos Dwarfs, because we'll want armies with Chaos Dwarf units, abso freaking lootly. And then we'll loop up this way through Grimgor and other Norskin territories. I think there's an Ogre tribe here as well. To get to Kolek, destroy Kolek, send him to destroy Village, and probably ally with Zatan, while Archaon moves through Grimgor's territory, and then through the Darklands, probably into the Empire to fight Vlad and Kislev, and, well, the Empire. I really don't want Arkan to spend eight years in the Chaos Wastes, even though that is on brand for him, but uh, <laughs> it'll take too long. Alrighty, anyway, Archeon, you're headed to the Tower of Torment, sir. So to the Tower of Torment ye shall go. Probably should have checked whether we could have uh, recruited any more units there. Eh, nothing interesting. I guess this is technically a different territory, but whatever. And assign skill points, ignore. Let us proceed, unless there's something to be building. Um, but there is not. Which means we're fine. Uh, upkeep reduction. I uh, probably should have switched you to exploit vessels. I'm going to switch it now, anyway. Construction cost reduction is going to be needed for when we inevitably upgrade this chaos fort. Double check this again, just to see. Nobody's willing to become our vassal. In turn. All right, Boris, where be you? I assume Boris is already at war with this little Cornate faction, so he should be somewhere around here. Hmm. I guess now the question will be whether we attempt to vassalize this Cornate faction, or... I don't know if the Tong are alive, but we could potentially revive them and then give this territory to the Tong instead. We don't necessarily have to have every Cornate faction, just out of curiosity. There's a Zinchin faction nearby that I was... I would assume would get into fight with the Cornate faction, but it doesn't necessarily have to be the case. Uh, Archaeon, go into raiding... Hmm. I have to raid your way forward. Wait. Units? Uh, there's a Marauder Horseman, which we could level up into a Chaos Knight over a long period of time. I'm not sure I'm willing to pay a thousand gold for it right now, though. Alright, there's that little Cornate faction. Ah, Boris! Where are you going? I should have gone here instead. Although, he might react to this if we declare war on him. Well, let's do that. Declare war? Yes. Probably could have asked uh, this guy to declare war on him, but I got too excited. Which you can't blame me for. Uh, we now have Marauders of Corn here. Although we have so many Marauders that I'm inclined to think that uh, the Marauder Horseman, despite the cost, would be the better choice. Uh, just to double check this... 
Horrifying presence gives us leadership unit experience for undivided units. But we can't access this yet. This ruin is bulwark will give us missile resistance, and the enemy army will be full of missile troops, so I think now's the time to get it. We were going to get Ruinous Bulwark anyway for whenever we attacked whatever fortress, so that's what we'll do. Uh, you, sir? You know what, let's go into spoils for post-battle loot. He'll be strong enough, and we'll get the most benefit out of it in the early game. And, yeah, he's gonna go for Monolith the Fester Lung, then we'll declare war on him. Uh, hopefully we don't have to do a little, uh, a little chase of him. Hmm. Since the cool are at war with him, he might go this way. I could try going up here. See if he'd run or actually decide to fight us. Screw it. Just get the Marauder horses. Go into regular stance, go outside a monolith or fester lung, and let's hope that Boris either stays or attacks us himself. He has two units of Zargard and Warbear Riders. Uh, those are certainly going to be threatening units, and we still got no use out of those Elst Riders. I should also probably go ahead and upgrade training, because we'll need the additional XP for Chaos. It's not the most useful trait. Well... Actually, nowadays it's a lot more useful than it used to be. It used to be absolute trash. Um, and nowadays, since veterancy has been upgraded to be so much more important and give such strong buffs, it's more important. And, but for Chaos Warriors, it was always good due to the additional XP needed to upgrade their stuff. Anyway, and Boris has been brave. He decided to attack us, and thus we will attack him back. Two Warbear Riders, two Zargard, and two units of Armored Cossars are going to be the threats here. Of course, and Boris himself, though he does and not have uh, Erskine with him, so no big old bear. And just the slightly, slightly smaller bears. Go. Yeah. Alrighty, here we go. Boris Ursus at last, although I guess we haven't been waiting all that long uh, to have a match with him, and it'll be a nice one in a pretty atmospheric map um, by the looks of it. Now, we do have our Hell Cannon uh, this time around, so we will be able to hold this hill and that we're currently holding and fire down on the enemy army until they come to us. That's a very, very nice map. All right. I like all these ruins around. Go figure. Anyway, our Hell Cannon is going to have to move forward a little bit, and it looks like the enemy army will move forward a little bit as well. But we have a pretty good position. The cliffside is to our back, so we have nowhere to run, at least hopefully. And I suppose we could have deployed a little bit further over here, but it doesn't really matter. There we go. Hell Cannon begins to fire at some Cossars and whatever is in range. Ooh, that looks like a nice hit, and I'm sure that did plenty of damage. And more hits will follow as the enemy tries to approach us. We'll probably keep a few Hell Cannons in this army. And just to make our cannon have a nice, balanced, undivided force. Alright, don't you miss this one. You're gonna turn, but the missile homes are on in and hits that unit of armored Cossars. Obviously, we're gonna use the Hell Cannon to target the armored Cossars and the Zargard, the units that are relatively likely to get both damaged by it, but also not dodge too much of it, like the Warbear Riders would, plus they're by far the biggest threats other than, uh, uh, other than the Warbear Riders, so... Yeah, plus they have the tighter formations than the uh, than the regular Cossars do, even if the regular Cossars are very, very fragile. Anyway, the enemy is still moving in a pretty big formation. They actually appear to be trying to mimic the movements of the Swords of Chaos and the Knights of Zinch, likely because the AI considers them to be the biggest threat on the field. And ooh, the fiery aspects of these uh, uh, of these Chaos steeds look pretty fantastic in this map. Just completely matching the uh, uh, the background here. I love it. 
Absolutely love it. All right. Starting to move forward now, at least a few of our Chaos Warriors and Marauders. We got to make sure that we hit those War Bear Riders. So we're going to send both Archaeon and Prince Ograx together at them at once and then stop them in place with the Tormentor Sword while we hit them with the Swords of Chaos. Over on this side, we are looking to fight the other War Bear Riders. So we've sent the Knights of Cinch together with the Hounds of Decay to poison and apply their attacks to them as well. While the rest of our fast movers loop around and are going to start ripping apart enemy relatively undefended costs our units. The weak ones, I mean, not the armored ones uh, that can reasonably fight back. First of the Searing Dooms comes down on the enemy Kossavite Dervishes as well as the War Bear Riders. Right on top of Archaeon, in fact, but it isn't a threat to him. And the Kossavite Dervishes are pretty much done. They're such a fragile unit, though, that, you know... Hardly unexpected. Now, as we can see, we charged forward a little bit with our Chaos Warriors and then backed off. What we're doing here is playing a little bit of cat and mouse and uh, forcing the enemy to blob up and try to chase after our Marauders. All the while, the Hell Cannon continues to provide support and hits multiple units at the same time. Over here, Zargar and a bunch of Cossars have engaged the spawn of Nurgle and the uh, Chaos Warriors of Korn. Uh, though I probably should have deployed these guys in such a way that they were a little bit closer to the War Bear Riders. It looks like Archaeonis and his uh, knights are still taking care of them, so it's all right. All righty, down go the War Bears. And out of curiosity, where is Borosurus? Ah, he's over here. He's finally reached uh, these guys, so we're going to back them off. He's actually on foot right now, isn't he? Yeah, so he's quite slow, and thus we don't necessarily have to uh, deal with that and allow him to hit or destroy models of our Chaos Knights. And just back off until we can send our Chaos to deal with him. Out here, the uh, units of Zargard are certainly holding against the Marauders without too much trouble, but while they're distracted fighting regular Marauders, uh, the uh, Chaos Warriors and the Fast Movers are ripping apart to the Armored Cossars and the unarmored Kossars alike. Then we can focus down the Zargard afterwards. Alrighty, how's that balance of power looking? Still only about, let's say, 65 to 70 percent in our favor. Getting a few hits on those enemy uh, Kossavite Dervishes uh, with our uh, units of Marauder Horsemen, but just to provide a little bit of uh, support. Out here, we've caught ourselves another unit of Kossavite Dervishes, as well as some unit of Kossars, which have been destroyed with uh, those Poison Warhounds. Gotta love the Poison Warhounds. And just like the Torox campaign, I'm probably going to use them quite a bit, but they're just so good. I mean, let's face it, dog units are really good in this game. In general, in the early game. And things like Flesh Hounds of Corn and the uh, Hounds of Decay are certainly no exception. In fact, you might say they're the leaders uh, for their pack. The only ones I don't like are scurvy dogs, and it's mostly because of the issues with the uh, uh, crumbling that plague the undead. Anyway, how's that balance power looking now? We're about 80-ish percent in our favor. We have also caught uh, Mr. Boris Ursus and both the Swords of Chaos and Archaeon on foot are heading towards him. Archaeon still looking weird without Dorgar, but hey, if he's on foot and Boris is on foot, it's a little bit even. Though we're not going to just straight up duel, because I don't want to waste like eight years waiting for a yes, one of our single entities to heal, especially in the manner of our uh, uh, in the manner of our Hell Striders of Slanash. Anyway, Boris is about half HP here and debuffed to heck. And having a pretty bad time, no less than his army, which is, by the looks of it, in by our blood already. Only the Tsar Guards still hold, and by the looks of it, they're going to shatter, and the rest of his army will follow suit. Surprisingly nice and long a battle, Slaneshi Giggle. At eight minutes nearly, much longer than I was anticipating here. And Boris is still fighting. I mean, you gotta give him credit. He may not be a Yaragni, but he can still hold his own against Archaeon and Prince Ograx and all the Swords of Chaos. Now that's what you'd expect from the Red Tsar, but alas, finally, he will shatter and the battle will be ours. 
I was actually going to hit back a few times, I think because of the Tormentor Sword. While units can't move, they are still able to attack even when shattered. And, huh, I guess the Tormentor Sword is still on him? Well, that'll just allow Archeon to finish him off, or will it? He will finally run, but Archeon will deal a finishing blow to him and bring him down. And a wound to the back doesn't seem like the Red Czar to me, but whatever. Anyway, a little bit of units to chase down, but we can do the rest of that off screen. Alrighty, very nice, a heroic victory, and only a single unit of irrelevant Kosovai dervishes uh, escaped. We have the Banner of Rage, which gives us base weapon damage, charge bonus, and melee attack, as well as immunity to psychology, though the latter wouldn't be super useful to somebody like Archeon, as I imagine he already is. Uh, melee attack and charge bonus, eh? Mm, gonna have to give this to the Knights of Zinch. Uh, the extra charge bonus on the blob rather than on the uh, smaller number of uh, the Swords of Chaos, though either way would be good. Uh, we get to sacrifice those captives and damn, 40k damage and 243 kills. Very good job by the Hill Cannon. They got a lot better uh, ever since we got that update with the uh, uh, homing attacks, and frankly, the spawn of Nurgle did fantastic as well, providing plenty of damage and anchoring the line of weaker marauders and regular warriors of chaos. Sacrifice. Alrighty, and now, oh, were we in, were we in their territory or our territory? Probably should have put Archeon in a, a healing stance, but whatever, there shouldn't be really at any anybody at Monolith of Festerlung, so we should be able to take it for ourselves either way. And I do mean for ourselves, because there's salt here. And, ah, defeated Boris Ursus, so leadership plus 10 when fighting against Warriors of Chaos, Demons of Chaos, Chaos, Dorsa, and Norska, which is what we're doing. Uh, which means it is indeed a good idea to take out Boris first, in order to get that buff. Uh, here... Construction time reduction, that's nice. Souls gained from battles, culling of the weak, that's probably what we should head towards immediately. And Dark Diplomacy is fine, I'm sure. Diplomatic relations increase. And this gives us Warband upgrades for various Chaos Horses. Allowing us Chaos Chariots and Hellstriders. This gives us no upgrades, but the Souls in the early game, I think, are going to be uh, quite useful to us. Ooh, Campaign Movement Range out of Infernal March. That's nice too. Ah, we want this early as well. Warband upgrades Forsaken. Right. The faster we can get Forsaken, the better it will most likely be. Uh, do we have anything interesting here? Eh, some stuff's available. Or rather, it's not quite a... Ooh, Forsaken of Corn. That'll be swell. Uh, some stuff has potential, but we can't quite recruit it. Anyway, Archeon, go into summoning stance, head to the Monolith of Festerlung, we'll occupy it for ourselves with an auto-resolve. And don't gift it to Vassal. I want to see what Salt does for us, which we kept. Growth per region plus 10 after winning a battle. Yeah, we're going to keep that. We'll want the extra growth. We definitely will. We'll have to figure out whether we want to destroy these guys, though, this little Cornate faction. Uh, the Dark Fortress would enable us to replace them with the Cool here and at the Tower of Torment. The alternative would be to force Vassalize them and thereby ignoring the cool keep them around they are at war with the all-seeing eye mm. and the all-seeing eye wouldn't like us very much for going up here but at the same time they would have access to coronate units which ain't too bad i just want to don't want to get bogged down here too long so we want to head down here and then around to colec asap I want to get Kolek on the field early. Uh, anyway, Dominating Presence, let's get Kindle Flame and... Burning Head. I mean, we should get at least some of the spells. We want Arcan to constantly be casting for Kindle Flame, and then also casting with whatever... Uh, uh, wait, let me give you just one second. 
This upgrade gives additional armor to Marauders, basic Marauders. Yeah, we'll want Chaos Vanguard in the early game, and it also buffs Chosen and Chaos Warriors and Aspiring Champ. Yeah, fine. Chaos Vanguard it is. We'll forego Kindle Flame. As I was saying, we'll want to stack that with the uh, Kindle Flame from a Chaos Sorcerer, which we actually do want. How close are we to the upgrade? Well, we're right there. You have the construction cost reduction, indeed you do, so let's start that going. And then get that Chaos Sorcerer on the field as soon as able. Ogrex. You're gonna get your spoils, and we have not picked up enough items to really do anything with it. End turn. Hmm. I wonder if we would have healed more by keeping Arcan in a different stance and being outside of the settlement. And depending on the faction and depending on the stances available, sometimes that does indeed work. Exquisite pain. Ah, trade agreement. Still feels weird that they can trade, but we'll certainly take it. Try not to die, good sir. And we'll help you out by destroying those Skaven for you as soon as we're done here. And what do we have here? Recruit 30 new units, grow your army, and ah, uh, this guy's nearby. Now, you're not willing to just straight up vassalize, are you? Oh, you nearly are. Huh. That would, out of curiosity, if we give you the monolith of Festerlung, you'd be willing to just straight up vassalize and give us a pile of money. I think we'll just do that. I know that we have the cool here, but eh, it's not, I think, a big enough deal for us to be concerned with. Let's double check that there's nothing interesting here. No trolls. Alas, some spawn of corn. Eh, spawn are pretty good in the early game. You can win pretty much the entire game using just Forsaken and Chaos spawn. And Hounds of Pestilence. Or Hounds of Decay, rather. Uh, let's replace this regular Warhounds with a Hound of Decay, I think, though. Honestly, let's replace... Okay, that's what we'll do. Though it is costly. We'll replace the Marauders and one of the Warhounds. One with a Spawn of Corn, and then the other with a Hounds of Decay. And I don't want to spend more money. Then, Arcane, you're going to go into March Stance. Do you need to heal? Not really. Go here. We'll want to... Oh, hello. This little army will run, won't it? I'm not even sure that we can reach it. Uh... Oh, but we, we can't go past it. It's exerting a zone of control. Ha 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 Not bad, eh? Uh, not bad. It's not doing it on purpose, but still not bad. Okay, yeah, it's gonna run. But I think our little friend here should be able to catch it. And also, speaking of our little friend here. Monolith of Fester Lung. Vassalize. Enjoy. Can we force you to give us a trade agreement as well? Apparently not. Okay. All right, free money, and we now have a little coordinate ally. We will have to forego this dark fortress, alas, but it is what it is. Archaon, you can no longer switch stances, but you are in enemy territory, which means you're free to go into raiding stance. Get a little bit of bonus from that, and destroy these guys and give them to our ally afterwards. End turn. All right, that guy's gonna run, but I doubt that Boris's faction will revive here, and we're not going any further north. It's time to go through the Skaven lands and grab ourselves a nice Kolek. And we should also look into getting our second army on the field relatively early, and maybe transferring any additional units they- ooh, nice, more trade agreement. Uh, transferring any additional units from them to Kolek so that he can get going immediately. Western provinces and the Jade Custodians have already confederated. We have a mission to sign a non-aggression pact, which is particular. Uh, He'll catch that. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna chase that. Uh, let's go for regular stance by the looks of it, and hit the Tower of Torment, which has it has a garrison, but probably not a garrison that's worth our time. I would like to see if there's any interesting units that we can recruit, though. Hey, Wintertooth encountered. Nice. And what do we have here? And no trolls. No new spawn. Just the Marauders of Corn, which are fine. I'd prefer them to the Marauders of Slanish, but nonetheless. Uh... Yeah, we're gonna ignore you, All-Seeing Eye. Actually, more likely than not, All-Seeing Eye will get into a war with whoever's beside him. I don't know who's beside him here, but by the looks of it, it's somebody Nurgly. Or it could be an Undivided that's doing Nurgle stuff, but uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, we'll do two other things. First of all, no vassalization options. Magath can want non-aggression, but I'd rather either vassalize or destroy them. Plains of Zumbaijin feels like something that should be owned by Archaon, doesn't it? Just from a loreful perspective. 
Also, there should really be a chaos landmark there at the Plains of Zambaijin. No, we had a whole little mini sub campaign, whatever you call it, scenario campaign uh, centered around it. Anyway, you know what? This is the last fight of the Kislevites, and even if it's a little fight, we'll fight it. Go, fight. The world has the word has lost all meaning, and, so, and the world has lost all meaning. Archaon. All right, it is decreed, and we have the spawn of corn together with the uh, chaos warriors of corn with halberds under the cornate skies. A red day shall be had here as we get our final battle, our final taste, at least for now, of Kislev, and turn to other more important, more threatening matters. Anyway, we're going to set this up with a, a little bit of forward movement, but begin bombardment with our hell cannon as soon as it's close enough we have our units of hounds of decay and knights together with the uh, smattering of other fast movers then deployed on the two flanks ready to hit the relatively undefended cossars once our main line and makes it in all right looks like that hill cannon is landing plenty of shots i ah, can't wait to get another one they'll be pretty helpful by the looks of it i also really like the way that uh, the uh, spawn of corn have been made into single units and the fact that it makes them really different from the other spawn is just fantastic. Alrighty, not much to say until the battle actually begins, but at least uh, we can send Prince Ograx forward. Archeon's still on foot. He's gotta be, uh, uh, he's gotta be champing at the bit to get uh, Dorgar on the field. How fast does he move, by the way? 35 speed, so he's a little bit faster than your standard infantry speed, but still relatively slow. Anyway, Prince Ograx makes his way into the battle first and immediately tormentor swords the enemy so that they cannot both surround and attack him. And I'm gonna pop that spirit leech on the enemy boyar, their lord, to try to get the morale shock on the enemy army ASAP, while an Archaeon heads in and the two and destroy them. Uh, units of Kosovite dervishes and Kosovite archers are over here. Unfortunately, we brought two counts of decay to chase them down and destroy them as they are far too fragile to survive that sort of thing while over on this side the swords of chaos together with another unit of hounds have made it into the flanks and are distracting enemy cossars preventing them from firing into the encroaching band of marauders over in the background we have our marauder horsemen and our hell striders running around but they're mostly there to get the occasional decisive rear charge to morale shock an enemy to rout and then to chase them off or to uh, uh, make sure that routing units actually shatter chaos spawn is in it to win it actually joined by chaos warriors of undivided uh, this time around while I do believe the enemy boyar will have already gone down to Archeon, and we've switched to the second one. And he's not happy about it. He's already broken. Lord died recently. We'll have Ograx chase him down while Archeon casts and heads right into the fight. Or to continue the fight, I should say. Though it does take him a long time to join the fray when he does not have Dorgar. <laughs> I'll keep talking about it until he gets his best horsey pal. Uh, very nice, very nice. We can get a few more of those Kossars routing, but it looks like there won't be too much more as the battle is rapidly turning in our favor. Ograx has nearly hunted down the enemy boyar. The rightmost flank has collapsed, and the leftmost and center line are in by our blood. 30 seconds of unbreakability, and then the last of Borosursus' forces will shatter, and the battle will be ours. There we go. Decisive victory over this battle and over his faction in general. I'm really enjoying these chaos maps as well. Most of the other factions fight in the chaos wastes too rarely, so you don't get to see the awesome maps too much, so I'm just going to take it in with every map while we're here.
Alright, easy little fight, and normally I might have auto-resolved this one, however, this is the last fight against Kislev until we hit Kislev proper, and for now we'll be fighting Skaven and other Chaos factions until we loop back around, so I wanted to make sure we give Boris Ursus and his faction a proper send-off. Now we're going to... We, <laughs> we can subjugate Boris Ursus. Yes, this would be funny. It absolutely would. Um, but in my experience, it doesn't really work that well. Because they generate like a minus 1,000 uh, uh, hatred of you, it just doesn't work well. So I'm just going to occupy it and allow the faction to be destroyed. Uh, hey, the Frolicker is bubonic. That's lovely. We got ourselves a nice little, uh, uh, nice little band of... On firefalls. Uh, a nice little firefalls. band of nerglings, which will come in handy, and uh, the lethal toxin that they apply, or whatever toxin, lethal poison, and that they apply will be handy in particular. Especially once we inevitably replace those hell striders so they don't, uh, you know, keep on dying. Anyway, with that, I think I'm going to call the episode here. This is probably a good place to call it as we have shored up uh, this portion of the border. And then next we'll head southward towards the Skaven, take this out, including Karak Doom, and trade everything but Karak Doom to the Storm Brackman or to uh, Exquisite Pain as we loop this way towards Kolak. We might stop by at the Frozen landing possibly uh just to fight the dwarfs for a turn or so hmm. i wonder how many f territories they have probably just crack a dragon this one but if we take this we could then occupy or befriend these guys oh we might even be able to vassalize them without doing anything else by gifting them uh, the frozen landing so it might be a good idea as well. It would also be nice to vassalize mr throggy and in fact for now let's uh and do a little bit of allying with him as well. And just to double check, okay, yeah, nobody else is willing to vassalize. Alrighty, that's it for now, I'm calling it here. Stay tuned for more Archeon as we, uh, well, kick this campaign off properly and try to acquire Kolek ASAP. I think next episode we'll also get our second army on the field immediately and start sending it up this way as well. And don't forget to leave those likes and comments below. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.